Hi everybody, sorry about that, I'm a little late, apparently my Facebook doesn't like my browser on my computer. Um, well, welcome. Um, today I am going to be talking about guardianships and conservatorships for minors. I know I've been talking a lot about different things that we can do for minors, um, but what if what if our children do need a, a guardian or what if they do need a conservatorship? What, what even is that? Um, I first just wanted to update everyone on the COVID-19 numbers um, as last updated on, on Michigan.gov's website. And it was last reported that we have con- a total of 49,582 confirmed cases of COVID-19, there have been 4,787 deaths, but the good news is that we've had 22,686 recoveries of COVID-19 in the state of Michigan. That's nearly half of people that have recovered from this virus than have contracted it. So what is a cons- guardianship? What, what is a conservatorship? A guardian is a person who is given probate court authority to be responsible for the person and the physical well-being of the minor. Or in court, they're called a ward. Uh, The guardian has the same powers and duties over the the minor, the ward, as parents do, except that the guardian is not obligated to support the ward or the child financially from his or own individual funds. The guardian may be either nominated by a, what is called a petition or named in a will, like we talked about before, or in a trust, or in some other um, type of estate planning document or a writing. A conservator, on the other hand, is a person who is given the same probate court authority, but instead of being responsible um, for the well-being of the child, they're responsible for the assets. That is what an estate is called. I think I mentioned this before. Everybody has an estate. So this is exactly what this person will be in charge of while the minor is still a minor who is also identified as a protected person by the court. And a conservator also may be nominated by a petition filed with the probate court or by a deceased parent's will. When is a guardianship needed? This is a great question. There are two different types of guardianships. There's a full guardianship and there's a limited guardianship. When a full when is a full guardianship needed? There's a couple of factors that go into that. One is when the minor child is unmarried and the parental rights of both parents have been terminated terminated or suspended either by a court order a judgment or a divorce um, death mental incompetence as determined by the court of one of the parents disappearance of the parents confinement in a place of detention or when the parents or parent have been permitted or have permitted the minor to, re- to live with another person, but have not provided that person with the legal authority for the care and maintenance of the minor. Or, all of the following. Number one, the minor's biological parents have never been married to one another. And two, the minor parents who uh, has custody unfortunately dies or is missing and the other parent has not been granted legal custody under the court and three 
the person whom the petition asks to be appointed, the uh, guardian, is related to the minor within the fifth degree by marriage, blood, or adoption. There's also a limited guardianship. And this guardianship can be done at any time for any reason uh, if the parents or the custodial parent or the surviving uh, parent voluntarily agree to suspend their parental rights uh, for a limited period of time and the court approves. And in this situation, the parent and the proposed guardian both sign what is called a limited guardianship placement plan. Um, And just to know that a limited guardianship cannot solely be used to establish residency for school purposes. And this is often a question that I, that I get. Now, when is a conservatorship needed? This happens when the minor child has money, property, or any other property interests that require protection or management because the minor is not an adult and they're not able to manage any of this property or any of their assets by themselves. Um, So that faces us with the question of when is a conservator not needed? This happens when a minor is entitled to receive money or personal property not exceeding $5,000 per year. So this money or property or any, any asset that the child gets may be given to the minor if he or she is married, uh, if, the, if the person resides with and has the care and the custody of the minor, the guardian of the minor, Um, the state or federally insured financial institution holding a savings account in the sole name of the minor with notice of the deposit to the minor. Those are the four instances where a conservator is not needed. Then poses the question of who may petition the court for a full guardianship? Like who, who is this person? It can be any person who is interested in the well-being of the minor. May it be a grandparent, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a godparent or an aunt or, or another relative or, or someone that is, has been close to the family. Um, also minors who are at least 14 years old. They can petition the court for full guardianship themselves. Uh, a guardian is is usually either nominated in a will or another writing of the parents, um, and the the other the parents may be can also appoint what is called a testamentary guardian of their surviving children simply by filing what is called an acceptance of appointment with the court. So who may petition the court for a limited guardianship? First, there's a couple of requirements. Both parents must sign the petition. However, if there's only one legal parent, only that person, only that parent is required to sign the petition. If one parent has custody, only that parent must must sign the petition. And the non-custodial parent must be notified of the hearing in court. But generally, um, the petitioning parents must attend the court hearing. But there are some situations like incarceration or or um, deployment that may be the case where their presence is is impossible. Um, and there may there are ways that that we can get around that in court. So who may petition the court for an appointment of a conservator? It can either be the minor, who, are, who is at least 14 years old, 
any other person who is interested in the protection of the minor's assets, other persons who would be, you know, possibly adversely affected by lack of proper management of the minor's estate, or a family member that's that's interested in protecting the child and managing those assets for them. Now, where and how is this petition filed? What do we do? So the first thing we need to talk about is the venue. Where do we go? So the guardianship of a minor may be initiated in the circuit court, the probate um, division of that court, wherever that child lives. For example, if the child, uh, if you're in Michigan and the child lives in Oakland County, then it's the Oakland County Probate Court. In Macomb, it's the same. It's the Macomb County Probate Court. And, the, and Wayne, the same. And these, the probate courts are linked to the circuit courts. And once that petition is filed, then a guardianship proceeding is commenced. Now, a conservatorship works the same way. So there's a petition filed and it gets filed in the probate court if in whatever county that the child lives. So in an instance where the minor does not live in Michigan, a conservatorship may still be initiated in whichever uh, county's probate court if the property is located in that county. So if there's a house located in, uh, in, in Oakland County or Macomb, and that child just happens to live in Florida, for example, a conservatorship for that property can still be filed in the county of where that property is located. So what happens after this petition is filed? First, there will be a hearing date set, and, and this is usually d- done in all instances except where there's a guardianship appointed in a will, who is then called a testamentary guardian, who will be, who that person will then be immediately appointed upon their filing of their acceptance of appointment. So how does that work? Parent or parents um, write in their will, I would want my child's godmother to be my child's guardian if I pass away. And if this is prepared in advance, then the godmother would be able to take what is called the acceptance of appointment, file it in court, and they are immediately appointed. So if this, there's no, no one appointed, there's no will, there's no trust, nothing like that, what happens? So there's a petition filed, as we talked about, then a hearing date will be set. So the person who is, is asking to be a guardian is called a petitioner. So this petitioner then serves a notice that there's going to be a hearing and a copy of what they have submitted to the court and all other interested persons who may be grandparents. Um, and this, this occurs, or the minor themselves, if they are 14 years old. Um, afterwards, there will be a hearing in front of a judge. And at that hearing, uh, the judge will then, if all goes well, issue an order allowing or appo- appointing that person to be the guardianship or conservatorship for the child. Well, thank you for tuning in. I just I just want to see if there are any comments or or, or questions from anybody before I move forward. I don't I don't see any.
So then what happens? Now we have a petition, we have a hearing date, and hopefully we're going to get an order. Um, For guardians, they have, both guardians and conservators, conservators have a list of responsibilities that they must accomplish. First, they have to write a written, every year they have to write a written report um, with the, within, I believe it's 56 days after of the anniversary that they've been appointed. So they have to do this every year. They have to write a report that is that describes the condition of, of the child. They have to serve this report. They have to um, also cooperate with an annual review of their guardianship by the court of all minors under the age of six. And a review might include a home visit by, the, by one of the court's officials. Um, a conservator, their role is a little bit different. They file what is called an inventory of the minor's assets, and they, they have to manage um, all of their assets. They have to keep an accounting um, of these assets, of all the income, all the expenses, all the property. And if for some reason any of these funds are restricted, possibly by a trust um, so, or or um, or a separate agreement with a financial institution, they must, and they need to use these funds, for example, for the education or other type of benefit for the minor, uh, they have to ask the court to be able to do that. And they have to keep track and to be able to manage and file uh, what is called an inventory and an annual account and a verification of funds every year. So guardian, what are their duties? What are what else are they supposed to do? They have to care and provide support for the minor child just as parents would do for their own children, except that they're not legally obligated to provide funds from their own money. They are not also not liable to any third persons by reason of the parental relationship of the minor's ex, meaning if what this child causes destruction of property at someone else's home, the guardian is not liable. Their sole responsibility is for the care of the minor's personal effects. They also have a duty to commence a protective proceeding if necessary to protect the minor child's property. They have the duty to receive money payable to uh, or for the minor's support. They have the duty to expend money received for the minor child's support, care, and education. They must also conserve any access, excess of the minor child's future needs. They must also facilitate the minor child's education, social, other activities. They um, must authorize medical or other professional care, treatment, or advice. They also must report annually to the court um, on the ward's condition, as I mentioned before. And they may also, um, their responsibility may include consenting to the minor child's marriage or adoption in some instances. Now, what are the duties of a conservator besides filing this annual report, managing um, the assets? They have to accumulate, preserve, and protect assets of the minor child. They have to handle those assets as any other competent adult would handle for his or her her own funds. They must also expend reasonable sums as necessary for the ordinary care and support of the protected person. They must also ask the court permission before selling or otherwise disposing of the minor child's real estate. And they must invest available funds 
um, pursuant to the restrictions on the letters of authority that they receive or they or by any court orders or any uh, advanced directives prepared by the parents that they would have had received. Um, one important thing to know is that conservators may be held responsible if they improperly manage the funds and if it's a result of bad faith or simply negligent handling like they don't they don't keep track they don't know how much is in there they they haven't you know put money aside for the for education uh things things like that now once once a guardianship and or conservatorship is established is it forever can it be terminated and the answer is yes it can be terminated it doesn't have to be forever and a lot of the times it's not forever but the only time that a guardianship ends automatically is when the minor child becomes 18 years old however there i know there are other circumstances which i will be talking about in weeks to come of guardianships for adults and guardianships for those that are um mentally incapacitated and those don't automatically expire or go away but a traditional guardianship for a minor does and this happens when they either turn 18 if they become emancipated in some instances if they get married or they die Um, other than that a petition must be filed to end the the guardianship or the conservatorship and the judge then makes that determination based on the best interests of the minor for instance if a guardianship does not end because the guardian returns or just because the um, guardian is uh, returns the minor to the parents the guardian will still be legally responsible until a petition is filed. A hearing is set and the judge makes a determination. The guardian can't simply just return the the child to the parent and then their responsibilities are over. It it doesn't work that way. There has to be an actual proceeding in court. Now, anyone, including the minor, who is at least 14 years old, may petition to remove that guardian or conservator or to appoint another guardian or conservator or to request the complete termination of a guardianship or conservatorship altogether. And the judge at that point will make a determination at a hearing. Now, the takeaways of of this is when, when... is the when do, is this needed and usually it, in instances where where there's the the parent is no longer able to do the things that they are required to do under under the law um, now next week i will be talking about conservatorships and um, guardianships for incapacitated individuals and I also will be talking about um, adults in weeks to come. I hope you get to tune in then. I don't see any questions and if you do have anything that you would like for me to talk about, I please send us a message. Please, if you have questions, I will address them if there's, if you send us messages. I will, I will take the time, I will research and, and and make it a topic of um, of one of our conversations. But thank you for tuning in, and have a great weekend, and um, I will see you guys next week.